welcome back to this uh, third session of uh, student center teaching learning workshop uh, so this is the last session of today there are two presentations uh, so the first one is by professor nandita madhavan and the second one will be by professor v kartik so professor madhavan uh, she is student of iit bombay she did her msc from iit bombay and pursued her phd from university of pudinoy uh, she is professor of chemistry and uh, she, she she recently became professor of, uh, in the department of chemistry before that she was faculty from 2009 to 2016 at iit madras and she was very actively involved in teaching learning center at iit madras her research interest are engineering biomimetic molecules using organic synthesis as a tool uh, as i mentioned uh, right from the beginning uh, she was involved with teaching learning center at iit madras and she had done a lot of uh, innovative uh, experiments about uh, education there she continues to support teaching learning center in a big way here we are right now developing a ta training program and you can say she has been architect of the ta training program that we are developing so today uh, uh, nandita will be sharing her experiences about uh, innovative ways of teaching she has tried in her courses uh, with this brief introduction i'll hand over to nandita thanks a lot i just share my screen my screen is visible no <laughs> your screen is visible yes yeah so first of all thanks for this invitation and uh, what i would be doing essentially is just sharing my experiments with teaching uh, i think every faculty has their own style which evolves over time um, and for me what i really found very useful was going through a faculty development workshop just a semester after i was into the teaching profession so in 2009 just a semester after teaching uh, there was this faculty development workshop conducted by professor freud and what i really liked about that workshop was it was not very prescriptive so there were tools that were given and then we were asked to play around with it in our own classroom and we used to meet every month after this fdp some of us who took this program and share our experiences and a lot of valuable thing i learned from colleagues at iit madras and also currently with colleagues uh, at iit bombay due to discussions and whatever we have even informally over whatsapp chai so i find these very precious and i would like to acknowledge that and i've also learned a lot from students and tas over the past years both at iit bombay and iit madras so this is just to give an idea of what my former teaching approach was so this is more of a philosophy evolution for myself um so the first semester i taught uh, there was a lot of focus on the syllabus of the course so i would look at the syllabus and focus on you know i need to cover these topics and then of course each of us puts in a lot of hard work in making our lecture notes very interesting so i spent a lot of time in gathering material gathering relevant material trying to make the lecture interesting and close to quiz one is when i started thinking about evaluation and at that point i guess i was starting to look at what do i actually expect my students to know so a shift for me currently has been i still look at the syllabus uh, which gives me an idea of the topics and i have been following this um, writing learning outcomes quite sincerely since uh, the later 2009 or early 2010 initially it was a little struggle to write good learning outcomes but over the time there is uh, you know with multiple iterations it seems to be becoming a little better what i like with this approach is that much in advance to the course beginning i get to think of what do i actually want the students to learn in terms of the output or what they will do with the data or information that i am giving and this has been a very useful framework for me in not only preparing the lecture lecture notes but also having the evaluation in sync with uh, the class content so i would just give 
some examples of the things I've tried and how learning outcomes have helped me in these uh, in this journey. So this is again adapted from the Texas A&M course delivery cycle that they had spoken to us about. Uh, when we think of courses at the beginning, we are talking about learning outcomes to have the content. So talking about learning outcomes in terms of uh, the content of the course. So at that point, we decide what would be the content. And of course, the syllabus and prior knowledge are useful guidelines for us to define these outcomes. The second stage is planning the classes. So in each class, as I said, we put an effort in planning the lecture materials. Then you have formative assessment, which is what we use to essentially identify whether expectations are being met on both sides. So are we able to meet the expectations based on our lecture delivery content? Are the students able to meet the expectations? So formative assessment is also very useful for the students to figure out if they are meeting the expectations, yes or no. And then once you go through this, you look at course correction. So if expectations aren't being met, one has to do some tweaking. So reflection is very important. And I found learning outcomes to be a very useful framework in doing this. So I'm not spending time defining the learning outcomes and all because I think that has already been done over the past two weekends. So I'll just move on to my experiences. So after trying a lot of things, uh, what I have been following as a teaching approach uh, in the offline mode is what is referred to commonly as a bookend approach. So in the bookend approach, you can think of the lecture as the stack of books which are shown here. It starts with an opening sort of activity and a closing activity. And between uh, the traditional lecture, so our traditional lecture would be where we go from the beginning to the end with constant lecturing. This is somewhat a hybrid mode where you lecture for 10 minutes. And this lecture part can also be interactive. It's not that you need to speak continuously, but you are free to do that. Uh, so you lecture for around 10 minutes, have a planned activity at the end of that. I'm sure you must have already heard that the attention span is not beyond 10 minutes. So which is why the rationale for choosing 10 minutes. So have a first activity planned then. Then again, have the second uh, book or volume of lecture, have another activity and then have the third volume of lecture and then have a closing or summary. So this is something which I've been following quite easily. Um, the thing is, once you learn a lot of these active uh, learning methods, so after our FDP program, we were all very excited to try a lot of different things. Um, we were told not to try everything at once because we are also learning. Uh, so this is sort of a hybrid mode where you can try these activities in uh, the five minutes of activity that you have between these lectures. And the other thing I like about the bookend approach is that it's very scalable. So I've been able to do this even in large classes, which is the examples that I'd be talking about today. And the other thing I learned is organization is very important while doing the activities. So having some sort of a structure helps in uh, ensuring that the class runs smoothly. The other big, very philosophical change for me after the FDP is Prior to the FDP, I thought it was very important for me to have like the perfect delivery skill in terms of speaking um, and having like the perfect um, intonations. Those are important. But one thing I learned after the FDP is that more important is for me to play the role of a facilitator. So although I might not be doing too much of talking, if I'm able to say walk around the classroom, help students, um, you know, work with the problems that they're facing, the learning achieved might be a lot more than them just passively listening to me. In a way that also relieves the stress that faculty have because you put a lot of emphasis on performance, whereas I think it should be more on the facilitation rather than the performance of oneself. So this is just a representative lecture activity plan for a course which I take for first year BTEC students. So the number of students is usually 250 plus in the class. And in the online semester, we had 300, but I will talk about that later. So this is for one lecture. So again, as I said, I map everything in terms of the learning outcomes. So here I'm showing three learning outcomes that I would be covering in this particular lecture. 
in some lectures, I'm actually covering only one learning outcome or two. So there isn't anything that you need to cover so many learning outcomes. It's quite variable is what I've personally found. Then the activity planned is to help students figure out whether they are achieving this learning outcome. So I've picked simple ones so that it will be easy for non-chemists also to get an idea. So the learning outcome here is differentiating between various types of stereoisomers. And the planned activity is where students essentially do this. So students are given a list of molecules to classify and the activity is an individual activity. And the tool used is Mentimeter, which I saw in the videos earlier that you have used for this workshop. So for those of you who haven't used it before, it's sort of like Amitabh Bachchan's Karodpati or whichever regional language you have watched it in the corresponding version of that, where in class you can project and students can see the bar graphs moving up and down. And they are able to figure out, so if you choose a multiple choice question, they are able to see how they have performed in terms of getting the answer correct and how their peers have also performed. So it gives you a sense of how the class is performing on that concept. And for a teacher, it gives us an idea of whether the student has actually grasped the concept. And accordingly, you can then go after the activity and clarify uh, issues that they have. And usually in the multiple choice questions, the questions I've chosen are those which indirectly give me an idea of certain tricky points which I've seen over the past students uh, have a trouble getting. So this gives an idea of whether they have actually gotten this concept or some additional discussion is needed. The second activity planned was uh, the learning outcome is assigning the absolute configuration. And here, again, a list of molecules is projected and students are asked to work in pairs. And when they're working in pairs, I usually walk around the class uh, and check what they're doing. And if they have any doubts, they usually ask or have them helping each other. So students who are able to solve this quicker, they help the others. And as you see, there's a time allocated for each of these activities as well. And the third activity planned was again, representing 3D models using 2D structures. Uh, this was slightly more challenging than the other ones. And they were given one molecule to actually work on and a think pair share activity, which is again, something you might have heard in the earlier sessions where students work in pairs and then the, they share uh, their responses at the end of the activity. So for this, I had given a longer time of five to eight minutes because I knew that this would take a little bit longer time for the class to go through. And these are some activities which I've used at the end. So if you remember the first bookend slide that I have, the two placeholders at the beginning and the end. So at the end, I've used something called a minute paper where students are asked to write brief answers to the questions. What is most valuable uh, that you have learned? And what is the muddiest or most confusing point in today's lectures? So in the offline classes, uh, they were asked to give me sheets of paper and which I would go through later. And I will tell you what I did with these sheets in the next slide. Uh, later on, I moved this to sort of an online mode because it's also good in terms of preserving paper. But I noticed that the number of responses reduced when I went to the online mode because in class, since students were there, they would anyway hand me the sheet before moving out of the class. And these were all anonymous um, comments. I told them not to write their name unless they wanted to. They were free to tell me also who they were. Some variations of the minute paper is writing a one sentence summary of today's class, write three most important points from today's discussion. How would you seminar the, I mean, summarize the discussion for a friend who is absent or defining in your own words, some term that was used in the class. I've also used the hot question on Moodle uh, instead of the minute paper where people can write what was a burning issue. And then students have the option of upvoting a particular question. The other thing which I've done is giving them a problem of the day, which is not discussed, slightly more challenging. I've asked them to start discussions in an online discussion forum so they can already have discussions on this problem. I usually let them interact with each other in the online forum and say that I would come back to it in the next class. And these are some activities used for the opening part of the lecture. So first start with muddy points. And sometimes there are a lot of humorous points in these muddy points. Uh, minute papers. Once I had the student write the whole thing in Malayalam because uh, they assumed that I can read Malayalam well. I am a Malayali. I speak very fluently, but I am not very, I'm illiterate when it comes to re reading. So I had a colleague of mine read it and it was quite a funny uh, note that was there. 
um so i even told students in class about it and how i don't understand malayalam so please stick to english hindi uh, little bit marathi or devnagari i can at least read the script so usually these uh, minute papers in larger classes especially when you get 100 plus um what i have done is i read it and cat categorize it based on topics so i first arrange them and then i prioritize it based on frequency so sometimes i have a ta help me with it we put tally marks to see which common concept people have uh, the most problem with and in the next class when i start the opening lecture i actually show them the tally points and address the doubts in order of the frequency or priority and if there are students where i have just one cheat on a particular topic i tell them to ask their friends or meet me later uh, after class to address it this thing uh, what i've seen is when students see that a lot of others are having the same doubt that they have it puts them at ease that they feel oh we are not the only ones left out and i even joke about it i said don't feel bad there are others who are having the same doubt and if the frequency is too much i tell them you shouldn't feel bad i am the one who should be feeling bad because i've probably done a very bad job of getting the concept across so i spend a little bit extra time on that particular topic uh, sometimes i start with a recap of the previous lecture and then uh, i also do discussion on previous problem of the day and talk about the answers that they had posted on the forum so these are some of the challenges that i faced and what helped here again talking to colleagues who have tried these things is very helpful in coming up with solutions so one problem which i faced initially was getting back to lecture mode after activity so once especially in the larger classroom the activity gets students excited people are working on it so getting the class back to you after the activity if you want to start talking sometimes is challenging so defining the activity time at the very beginning helps quite a bit so if i say so if you saw the sheet part of the excel sheet i had shown earlier i had written 5 minutes there but typically to the students the activity would require say 3 minutes and i would stick to that 3 minutes and stop the activity at that point keep some buffer time of 2 minutes uh, so that it actually helps student encourage i mean it encourages discussion between students um so this has helped getting keeping track of time i'm still struggling with it sometimes because some activities get a lot of discussion going uh, sometimes i don't put a stop if i see that the discussion actually leads into the next segment of my lecture so a lot of times it happens that the activities are planned to sort of get them thinking to you know uh, how do we go about something like this why is this you know uh, working like this so then i tell them oh great that's what i'm going to talk about now so it gives me a very nice transition for the next part of the lecture the other thing is the quizzes on mentimeter so there are two options on mentimeter one is a poll and one is a quiz so if you use a quiz on mentimeter you have the option of auto timing it so when students are typing in their response they have only a limited time exactly like karodpati where you have that tick tick meter going so it goes within that time and uh, they have to move on to the next question uh, during that time the other question that most of us had initially when we were switching is will i run out of time to cover the content because we are so used to talking everything and explaining everything uh, this is a big fear because we are kind of um, using our time now for the activities so basically what i have personally learned is that the learning outcomes help quite a bit in filtering content so if i have a learning outcome which i think is at the recall level of the bloom's taxonomy or if you are not familiar with the bloom's taxonomy involving a lot of recall these things can actually be given as self study because i don't see my personal contribution have that much value for the student they might as well read it themselves and learn it well um except it's important to have it done before the class if they need some of these topics for what is being covered in class the other thing which i found is uh, the pre activity module i have usually stuck to only basic content no solving examples because what uh, was also part of the fdp when we found out is when instructors solve examples most of the thinking is being done by me and not really by the students in the class they are just watching me and i remember as a student to the uh, i would see the faculty solve something on stage and it would look very simple and then once i have uh, i try to solve this myself later i start struggling with it 
so that's why i've been avoiding any solved examples and getting the students to do it during the activity and what i've found is that during this activity some of the concerns that i actually tell them you know you may face this you may face that these things actually come from the students and then can be addressed in the second half of the lecture so it creates a very nice preface to the second module that i have of my lecture the other thing which i found helps is having student work in groups for different modules and then the groups sharing the insights so although in that case the lecture is split a little where it's a mix of activity come lecture module but the content covered actually remains the same it's just that i am not doing the talking it's coming more where students are working it out and realizing it on their own the other thing is dealing with classroom noise initially so the first time some of these activities are run the classroom noise just goes up and initially you find it a little overwhelming initially because you feel that you don't know they might be discussing something they watched on netflix so this is again where walking around helped quite a bit where when you're facilitating the discussion it first helps keeping the good noise and the bad noise separate uh, and then later on you realize that there is nothing like bad noise if it's a constructive discussion the noise is good and this is something i really miss in the online class because it's just blank uh, unless the people raise their hands and they speak so uh, before i move on i have not planned any activity for this uh, session because it was more of experience sharing so it can be very boring just to hear me talk so feel free to interrupt at any point with comments or uh, your own experiences so these are some of the challenges that uh, i and many others who have tried this have uh, seen students facing and they have spoken about it initially students are very uncomfortable doing these activities uh, there are the different persona of students there are the students who are very anxious of getting an answer wrong and being afraid that how will that impact my impression on my peer or the teacher um, there are students who if they are not able to solve something get into a panic mode and feel oh i am not getting anything how will i proceed further there are also students who are not you know they crib about not having the opportunity to just sleep in class and why am i made to do stuff in class i would rather just sit and listen to you and this is something which has uh, openly been shared by students initially uh, this is based on some feedback that i got from people working in the education department and also uh, professor freud so what helped is saying in the first class why you are doing all of this um, so i have try to do this where in the first class i tell students see you would be doing these problem solving activities there is research which actually shows active learning helps your learning so although you might be comfortable in the long term it will help you learn uh, the other thing i have uh, tried doing is providing words of reassurance so it's okay to feel uncomfortable and to be wrong and uh, i have told them based on my own experience sometimes when you leave the studying and actually doing stuff to the last minute the day before the exam i said that's the time when you work out examples and realize hey i'm not getting this and then you'll call your friend or sit in the mess or send frantic emails to the ta or the uh, instructor so i said better than that we are doing this in class so if you are struggling with someone we have a chance of working together and solving these problems so that usually helps quite a bit and the third thing which uh, i mentioned this in the uh, minute paper minute paper part as well showing these uh, mentimeter projections where students see that others are also getting the answers wrong is sometimes reassuring where they feel oh, i am not the only person not getting this answer because usually when you are just writing things in your notebook and looking at the instructor or if you say the wrong answer you really don't know how the others are faring in class and most likely people might not admit very freely that they were wrong so this case they have statistics right in front of them so it makes them feel a little reassured that i am not in the same boat and as i said i tell them if many of you are getting it wrong it's not a problem with you it's a problem with me so that again eases out eases out the stress a little bit the other type of students who have uh, i've seen don't like this is who are uh, not very comfortable speaking uh, to the teacher or in front of their peers or uh, they have this kind of um, inhibition to write things uh, express themselves um, very freely 
and i think most of us have gone through that like whenever we have to ask something we think twice is this probably a good question to ask what will my peers think about it so having them work in groups and share the answer of a group helps this way because in a way you are you don't have complete ownership for the answer it's a collective ownership so that way even if it's wrong the collective ownership is uh, it's it's collective so you don't feel as bad um allowing anonymity in online activities like mentimeter there is another gaming uh, tool called kahoot which is useful useful and if you want to use the free version the class size limit is 50 uh, but if you want a paid version you can pay and get it and even in the minute papers i've usually ask them to hide their identity so that they can free, uh, speak quite freely so this is some of the student feedback the questions that were asked are shown on the top and i'm focusing on the things that i have spoken about all, already so one one question which i usually ask so this is in addition to the institute uh, teaching course feedback i usually give them google forms uh, just to see how the course is going on so one question is knowing learning outcomes was useful and mostly i have seen people strongly agree or agree i've never had anyone disagree because one thing i've also told students is you can use this as a framework during your self study so if you are reading a book you can check yourself am i able to achieve this learning outcome if not that indicates you need to spend some more time on this content the other question was on in class activities whether they improved the students understanding so this is another thing that students have agreed on uh, minute papers at the end of the class was useful so this as you can say see is a mixed opinion and i'll also tell you what i observed over time so there is a small portion portion of strongly agree large portion of agree and then neutral and there are some people who did not even realize that something like this was going on in class so that will tell you that it's like not perfect always right you have uh, people who are not paying attention but uh, what i noticed over time with the minute papers is that the number of cheats i was getting if it's in the it's around say 150 for the first uh, btech class of 250 students it would slowly dwindle down to say 60s or something if i am repetitive in this exercise so which is why i had that slide on other things that can be tried instead of minute paper because what i found the students have found this a little repetitive in writing it and initially i was not doing this tally mark and uh, telling them that all their responses have been read so some of them might have lost interest because they thought that i was not addressing it properly so which is why i have um, now moved to having a mix of activities at the class end initially i used to just do minute papers so the last bit i have was is on the online semester and uh, some of the things that i have tried there and uh, for the offline mode i have not gone into detail on some of the activities uh, specifically that were tried in class feel free to email me to discuss that i just wanted to give a picture of the overall teaching philosophy and as i said i think each person might have their own style and their own uh, type of activity that they might want to design so for the online approach there were uh, online semester there were two teaching approaches that i had used uh, one is for again the large class uh, we have four instru instructors and each class is around 300 students so around 1300 students we have in total um, so my division for example had 350 students and so did another division division and some of the other divisions were smaller um, we had only live sessions so no recordings Uh, the recordings were shared later on so these sessions were only live so what i tried to do is i tried to use the bookend model for this class and uh, activities the ones which i could do were mainly mentimeter based so these are individual centric activities so not really involving peer discussion so in class these were the activities i could do in uh, mentimeter minute paper through moodle hot question and most of the peer interaction or the discussion happened offline through moodle i could not find a very good way to do do this in class so if anyone has any ideas please feel free to email me so that we can discuss and i can try some of this uh, in the coming semester some of the challenges uh, which i faced is facilitating peer interaction as i already mentioned this uh, and what was really great was these group of highly enthusiastic tas that we had for this course 
so they were so proactive on the whatsapp group and uh, they had formed i mean independently smaller whatsapp groups uh, to discuss things issues that students were facing in class and one of her tas was extremely proactive so she had even organized a session in the first semester for the students on how to deal with iitb and the stress that she had faced even in the offline mode in class and uh, how they can approach her and there was a lot of learning for me from the tas uh, they used whatsapp and ms teams discussion very very efficiently so even for the tutorial so i used to be like a silent um, spectator and just hop around in each of the tutorial sessions that we have for this class so we had uh, weekly tutorials where students would be interacting with smaller groups of 40 and the tas uh, used very nicely the whiteboard that microsoft teams uses and even for getting students to solve and share they use whatsapp where students shared the images of what they are working on and it was done very nicely uh, by the students so this, this was a very good learning for me and later on i realized that these uh, students and the tas had such a nice bond that they were taking extra sessions like a day before the end sem uh, sometime much before that also when students and this was initiated by the class students so where the students were requesting the tas to do this so beyond the point my interaction started being focused with the ta so they would message me students are having this doubt uh, and they would then take it to the class so it was more where my interaction was with the students and the student uh, with the tas and the tas were actually uh, doing a very good job with the inter i mean uh, initiating the peer interaction so this is the assessment model that we use this is a big challenge in the online semesters and the assignments tutorials again were mainly for self assessment so i already spoke of the tutorials the tas did a great job and there was no grade for this so the students were able to um, spend a lot of time on discussion the final exam that we used now here uh, we have this thing called brand change which is very sought after in the first year class so we have to ensure that the exam is done as fairly as possible so we used and at the same time there is no problem with you know uh, if we do a pen and paper exam some images getting lost uh, some variation in terms of grading so we actually did a multiple choice exam first time in this course ever because this course has always been a pen paper based exam we used a large question bank of 100 plus questions um, each student got almost a unique question paper and the clones i mean it spent us a long time actually crafting these paper i remember the week of the exam there were days where we sat up at 3 am and 4 am and we were joking that i don't th i mean i never thought i still had the ability in me to sit up till 4 am because uh, lately you get sleepy a lot easier so all four instructors we sat up till 4 in the morning crafting these questions and just to give an example i'm choosing the same learning outcome that i had on the earlier slide where the outcome is to determine relationship between two molecules and i specifically chose this even for the non chemists so the question looks something like this for student a the clone would look something like this for student b and they have to classify i mean there are three four options they have to classify what it is like now even for student a to figure out if student b has the same question they are actually doing the operation of figuring out the relationship between these two questions so even if they are attempting to cheat at this point in order to get a decent answer uh, they would need to accomplish this learning outcome because the answers are different for the clone so they would need to figure out or do the exercise even for cheating so coming up with questions like this uh, for the course took a long time for us to ensure that you know even if students had the means to discuss they would not be able to cheat directly because there was some tweak or some trick where the questions deceptively looked similar but were not this is the second teaching approach that i used for the online semester so this was a course where i was the sole instructor this is an msc first year course uh, the class strength is 70 students this is a half sem course so i used what i am calling the deconstructed book and approach so for those of you who have seen master chef and all they talk about deconstructing these really nice food items and all that so sort of the same analogy here and also it's the more i guess scientific term for it is a flipped classroom so here what i have done is i had pre recorded lectures 
again now if you notice the volumes the smaller volumes are the lecture and the larger volumes are the activity so for the smaller volumes i had just 10 to 15 minutes max of video so i ensured that the videos are max total 30 minutes and the live discussion was 55 minutes and each of these activities were structured where there were time in the middle for doubts so the activity or the live discussion session did not have me giving much of explanations it was where students were doing activities and these were structured so at any point there wasn't a lull where i would be sitting and saying does anyone have any doubts and there would be no response so there were things where students were working on and after the icebreaker having doubts in the middle helped students to open up and then speak about their doubts here the assignments were focused on effort so students were asked to generate a question for a topic uh, on this was done on the dis discussion forum so questions could not be repeated the quizzes and online exam were paper pen with two device uh, proctoring so here the class size was small enough where me as well as the tas could uh, look at the assessment so these are some interesting observations that i had in the online semester uh, the pros is access to recorded live session and lectures will help helpful to students both in approach one and two uh, so i found it personally very easy to remember names i am terrible at remembering names i am good at remembering faces uh, last semester, since videos were off quite a bit, remembering faces was a challenge, but names somehow stuck with me. Uh, depth of questions covered, especially in the approach to, so I've listed the two approaches in, in case uh, you don't remember. Approach to is a flipped method, and the depth of questions covered in the activity sessions were higher than what I observed in the regular semester, because students had more time to look at the videos probably again and again, and the activities, um, it helped, helped quite a bit, I think, for the students to ask questions. Uh, for approach to, I personally found a greater interaction with students because certain students who are silent in a regular class, they were also speaking up is what I felt. Of course, I have nothing to compare because I have not taught the same batch, but just the number of distinct responses I was getting from different people seemed to be good. Um, there was greater out of class interaction in approach one, and this was mainly TA driven and also driven by me on Moodle. Covering content was easy and because of the pre recorded lectures, covering content was easy and we could just focus on uh, the activity sessions to go into a little more depth of the content and uh, actually do stuff with the content. Cons is uh, in class activities were uh, limited to Mentimeter chats and doubt session. Class participation is uh, very challenging for resource constrained students, uh, especially some students told me who are using mobile uh, for uh, viewing the lecture. They had a tough time navigating between the classroom and the Mentimeter quizzes on class. And uh, approach one where I was doing the bookend and live covering content was a little challenging because there we had to uh, and four of us were going in parallel. So we had to ensure that, you know, uh, all these activities are planned very well uh, to get the content covered. And since this was the first time with the online live session, I struggled initially with the whole time management thing I was talking about in the earlier offline mode. So I had first left the chat open and I noticed that within 30 seconds, there were like 50 questions on the chat. So I did not even have time to go through the messages in the chat so then i had to evolve to a, a method where every 10 minutes i open chat but even when i do that at an instant there are so many messages that come there is a good chance that you end up missing the messages and also some some students told me that having the chat on in the side for the large classroom when i did a poll was a little distracting for some students Quantifying student participation in an online classroom. This I found Mentimeter as a very useful tool. So I can have students who have the you know window open and they might be watching TV or doing anything on the side. But having these Mentimeter activity gives me an idea of statistics as to how many people are attentive in class. Um, and just to give an idea, the attendance was not mandatory. Uh, the Mentimeter participation was anonymous, so they did need not have given their names. I told them they can give nicknames on Mentimeter. So I said, feel free to choose whatever nickname. So I had people like Sheldon attending my class. Uh, it was quite interesting. The course feedback in general was positive uh, in the TCF that uh, Institute gives. 
challenges as i said students using mobile told me it was very difficult so i told them so later on the mentimeter quizzes where first i would give them 2 minutes to work out the problems so that everyone has a chance to do it in their notebook and then we would move on to the mentimeter portal so there i would just give them like a minute to just key in their answers or sometimes even 30 seconds so this is the engagement for the 3 to 4 week course which is 105 uh the as you see there is a dip in the number of students so on the y axis i have number of students and this is the week so week 1 you can see that out of like 300 students who attended class there were i would say 270 who were attentive and answering all the mentimeter quizzes then this stayed in week 2 there was a dip when i go to week 3 and week 4 but the percentage in terms of the number of students attending class to students taking the mentimeter quiz remained the same and for the msc class which is a 6 week engagement here again i see a dip from around 54 in the first class the rest stay in an around 40 plus minus and the class participation was around 50 usually uh, the class strength as i said is 70 but only 50 attended the uh, lectures and many of them were also um, I, i mean they had bandwidth issues and trouble uh, attending the class and some of them especially in the msc class told me they found it difficult to participate in the mentimeter quizzes so this is sort of a summary of uh, the things that i have tried uh, and as i said one of the things that i really enjoy in this profession is you learn from colleagues so one of the thing which some of my colleagues have uh, tried last semester and i thought i will share because this is something which i plan to incorporate in uh, some of my future courses so after our btech course gets over this is a course 107 on quantum chemistry physical chemistry Uh, the course in charge is professor arindam choudhury and there is a group of several instructors so if you need more information you can contact him and uh, the weekly assignment students were given was to write a homework summarizing the week's lecture in 100 to 200 words and there was a student who actually wrote something like a rap version of quantum chemistry so you can read what the student has written uh, up in the chilly alps schrodinger had a brilliant flash energy operator on the wave result must match change with respect to time into reduced planck's planck times i born gave us the die your wave functions normalize separate the variables we've got rid of time particle in a box we get constant into sign from the boundary condition discrete solutions arise the continuous world crumbled now physics is quantized and this student sent rap messages like this every week and uh, my colleagues we we have a department whatsapp group they shared this and after that we were requesting please share this every week and not just this one student there were some others also who then came up with innovative ways to describe what they have learned and i think the joy in seeing this for the instructors is probably unmatched so sometimes just having students open their creativity is great and of course the instructors had to spend a lot of time reading this uh, again they had a good group of very enthusiastic tas who helped this so with this uh, i will stop again with what i started the course delivery cycle uh, los play a very good framework as i said in developing formative assessment checking if expectations are being met and doing course correction and what i have personally found very very useful is talking to colleagues not only within the department but across institutes to pick and choose on what you think will work for your class and reflection and course correction after getting feedback from students as well as uh, your peers so that's kind of a summary of uh, the teaching experiments and i'll be happy to address any questions here or over email